Hello guys, uh, welcome to Photoshop Magic. Alright, so uh, as always, my name is Sopal and today we are going to be talking about a very interesting topic. It's how to create a double exposure effect using two photographs. So as you can see on your screen right now, there's uh, two images of, you know, just two couples, basically an older couple and just uh, a younger couple. So uh, in this situation, uh, you know, we're just going to pretend that, you know, these two are the parents and, and then this is either their son or daughter with their significant other. Okay, so basically, uh, as you can see in the after effect, we're able to combine the two. Uh, being able to still see the, the parents for in the background, which is pretty cool. And then their son or daughter with their significant other in the background. And, you know, if you were to know them personally, you would still be able to tell who they are based on the images because they're quite clear and we're, you know, beautifully blended together. Okay, so it's going to be amazing. All right, so, uh, and as always, you know, um, uh, this channel focuses on the magical and creative power of Photoshop and it is designed for anybody who has no prior knowledge to get him or her excited and aspire to master Photoshop the basic and intermediate level. So um, if you are new to Photoshop, welcome. And I hope you will be able to uh, find my content valuable. Um, show me that you love my work by subscribing, like, and share my content. And as always, if the video is too detailed or slow, you can always just speed it up two times speed and it'll turn your bad day into an amazing day by you know making fun of me, you laugh it up, and all as well. Okay, and as always, uh, give credit to the owner of the photograph used below, like below. These are the information from there, which I will be showing you guys in a bit. Um, yeah, let me show you how funny it sounds. So you can just you know change that setting to two times speed for any video. In Photoshop, it's a very complex program, so meaning that um, throughout this whole tutorial, try not to get ahead by clicking away um, every click counts because if you just if you are one click away where a certain thing is not highlighted or it's not selected and you go on to the next uh, step and it's not working and it can get pretty frustrating. All right, cracks me up every time. Okay, so let's get started without further ado. Okay, so the very first thing we uh, I'm going to show you is where you know I found my images, and again it's through pixels.com, P-X-E-L-S, and these are the two images. So I did some search, I found them, I like it. This is the second one. So all you have to do is just click on the left arrow right here. We're going to click the drop down arrow, click download. And we're going to go to the uh, up arrow right here, click on show in folder. And just make sure to copy and paste the image to where you know where you saved it. So when you open it up on, on Photoshop, you know exactly where to find it. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to file and we are going to go to open. And we're just going to find the two images that we would like, which is this, this case right here. And it is going to be this one and this one. So the first one is selected. If you click on the second one, the first one is going to be deselected. Okay. To be able to select both of them at the same time, after one of them is selected, you want to hold the control button, which is the bottom left of your keyboard. Hold it down. And we're going to left click on the second one. And as you can tell, they're both selected now. We're going to click on open. That's going to open both of them up. So the very first thing that we want to do is we want to work off of the the image that we want would like to be in the background. We want to be able to select them and using the, the select tool. Okay. All right. So we just want to go to the select tool right here, which is this one right here. We want to right click on it. And there's three different options. So the very first one's object selection tool, which we don't want. We want the second one, quick selection tool. We're going to left click on it. And obviously after that, um, my brush is fairly large, which, you know, which is what I want for this effect. But you can also make these changes up here too, if need be. And again, we want to select the areas where we want to keep. Okay. So I'm going to start with the shirt right here. We're going to left click, hold and drag. And we're going to let the computer do the rest. Just like that. Just, you have to be really careful in this area to just, just take our time in here. Uh, to make sure everything is selected the one that we want and as you can see you know the computer made a whole bunch of mistakes uh, out here uh, not intentionally but i was going to make the intentional mistake anywhere to show you how to fix it okay so as you can see this whole area got selected which we do not want again so to fix that we want to hold the alt button down on the keyboard bottom left uh alt and we're gonna we're, it changes to a minus sign as you can see on the screen that's so once I hold the alt button now it changes to the minus sign we're gonna left click hold and drag in the areas where we do not want to be selected which is this area right here and as you can see I'm just doing it to the background and 
the computer is smart enough to recognize that um, I do not want you know a certain area too and you know it conforms. Okay, so I'm just gonna stay on the outside right here and it's gonna fix that immediately. Super fast. I'm gonna let it save real quick. Perfect. So um, as you know I have said it many times Photoshop is a very complex tool and we want to be able to uh, when we want to be able to do a certain thing we do not want to click away okay so each click matters so please do not click away or else you might get lost so just you know try to follow along as you can because if a certain item is not selected and you go on to the next step it will not create the effect that you would like okay all right so now that they are both selected Okay, this part is super important that we, we need to refine the edges, okay? So since I'm using the latest uh, Photoshop, it is a little bit complex in trying to get to it. Uh, what we need to be able to do is that once this uh, section is still, make sure you still have the marching ant. I have two screens right here, so I went to my other screen and just got deselected for some reason. So I came back and make, I'm making sure it's selected. Yours should still be, okay? So we want to hold the shift button down uh, and then we want to go to where it says filter, I mean select, and we want to click on select and mask. Okay, so we're going to click on that. As you can see, it did a pretty good job of the areas where we selected. Now, this part is super important because it will allow us to be able to create that effect where we want later. So we want the smooth to be around like above 50. Let's make it fast. And once we've done that, uh, you can play around with this obviously each you're going to have your own unique photo on uh for this photoshop project and it's gonna uh, uh require a different number in here to make it look as nice as you want okay so now that we have all the smooth above 50 i'm just gonna uh basically what we want to do is we want to uh make an outline just around the the edges okay i'm gonna left click hold and drag and if you were to somehow release the the left hold on here it's okay but we want to, it to be continuous and we don't want it to be cut out as you can see like i i did that whole portion right there by mistake and it's okay so it doesn't need to be perfect all it needs to be is around the edges right here and we want to make sure it's continuous it's not you know cut out or anything so we just want to want to take our time a little bit in here just make sure everything's highlighted and again continuous that's the that parts matters a lot in this section right here. Perfect. Just like that. Just around the edges. That's all that's all we're doing right here. And as you can see, I'm I'm you know painting a little bit, you know, over the photo too, which is okay. Just like that. We want it to be continuous, which I'm just gonna release it, let it do its thing, and we're just gonna tap OK. Okay, so this other part is super important. We, we need to create a clipping mask in this area right here. So you just got to make sure that this background is selected, if not already, and this should still be half the marching ant. Okay, to be able to do that, we have to right, uh, let's see. We have to go to the bottom of the, the screen right here where it says, where it's the black circle with the rectangle, and that's create a clipping mask. Okay, we're going to, it says add a mask. If you hover over it, we're going to click on it. And if done right, you should be able to see a chain right here connecting the two. And you should see an image of the areas, the white area where we selected the two couples. Okay, perfect. I think we have reached an area where it is fairly safe to save our work because we've done a major job right here to be able to do all that. And it's always the best practice in Photoshop or any software that you do um, to be able to save your work as soon as you can and continue to save it every few minutes or so. So if something were to go wrong, because we know that something is always going to go wrong in life, uh, you know, there could be an earthquake right now for all we know, you know, the power could go out. Good thing I have it charged up and um, I'll plug into a power source. So or the program could be freezing or anything could go wrong. OK, so we're just going to go to file. We want to go to save as uh, save um, if it allows us to save it. Um, save or save. It doesn't really matter. So we're going to click right here. And you have to make sure it is saved under Photoshop um, as a default, because if not, 
it's uh, even if it's our final work, we're not going to be able to make changes in the future as we want because it wouldn't have all of these layers, all these effects applied to it. It will be just an image blend together with no layers. Okay, so we're just going to name it double exposure. Exposure four. So you know, I have one, two, three. Okay, so we're just going to save it just like that. Perfect. So now we're going to go to our, our uh, second image uh, right here. <clears throat> and we want to make sure that the uh, move tool is selected. So we're going to click on the move tool. And this part, if you have never done it before or are not familiar with Photoshop, it can get a little bit intimidating. But once you've done it once, uh, it's pretty much self-explanatory and you will uh, know how to do it in the future. So what we want is we want to be able to move this whole image to that second image right there. So as you can see, I'm just hovering over this portion right here for the, the other image and it's highlighting, right? So we want to left click, hold and drag this whole image to anywhere in this area right here. As you can see, I'm, I haven't released it yet. It changes automatically to the other image and then that's what you want. And then after that, you want to come down to this empty space area and release it anywhere we're just going to release it and the first through it's not going to look you know how you want it and we want to be able to move it around we want to be able to resize it so the first thing you want to do is we want to uh resize it by holding the control button bottom left of the keyboard ctrl and we're going to tap the one and as you can see it changes to all of these dots right here and we're going to left click hold and drag get up here and then I'm going to come anywhere in a photo and then we're going to drag it down just like that. So it, it seems a little bit small to me. What I want to be able to do is to be able to fit both of them as large as possible right under their, their, their neck right here. I think that looks amazing. Okay. So I'm just, I'm just lining his head with their neck right now. And now I'm just going to resize it to just like that. Perfect. All right. Okay. So the next thing that we want to be able to do after the resize, we want to make sure that the layer one, the new layer one that we just come up, make sure we right click on it. And once, when you right click on it once, it, it might, uh, it might not work. So you have to do it a second time. And what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to create a clipping mask. Okay. So once you click on create a clipping mask, you will see this amazing blend of the two images together. And uh, after that, after you've done that, you can come up to the photo and you can left click, hold and drag, and you can move it out a little bit. As you can see, all it is is it's conforming to the, because of that clipping mask, it's conforming to the shape of the two people in the background. And we, you know, it's even though it's blocking them right now, um, we will be able to fix that later on. Okay, so we're just going to do that. Perfect. And that clipping mask, you you know that you've done it right, but you will see this uh, arrow facing down. Okay, so I'm just going to put them in the middle. And again, we can, you know, resize it as we want to, just like that. Perfect. The next thing that we want to be able to do is we want to have a background. We don't want this empty space in here. So to make sure to have a white background, we're going to create a brand new layer. So we're going to click on the plus sign here with the square around it. And we're going to have a third layer. And again, um, you might have to click it twice, one time to kind of select it, another time to create that second layer. Okay. Okay. And then we want to drag this, this layer, which is this empty space, um, to be the background. Okay. To be able to do that, it needs to be below everything else. So we're going to left click, hold and drag anywhere in this right, uh, gray area right here. Left click and it just that hand. We're going to all the way down here. Uh, you will see uh, this turquoise line right here. And that's when you know to release it. And you're not going to see anything in here right now, but in a little bit you will. So basically this second layer is becoming our background. And you have to make sure that the foreground is white or any color that you would like the foreground to be okay so I kind of think 
the color would look even more amazing if it's kind of a uh, like a yellow or, or orangish orange kind of just like that trying to match you know the sunset color a little bit just like that trying to match it or you can just come out here a little bit and we will uh, try to match that match the color this is like a pin drop and we're gonna click OK so perfect and we're gonna go to the paint bucket tool we're gonna right click on it there's gonna be three options we have to make sure to pick on paint bucket tool and from there it changes to a paint bucket and you have to make sure that your paint bucket is anywhere in this blank space and not in the center and we're gonna left click once and as you can see the background changes to an orange color and that looks amazing perfect and we have reached the point where it's always a good idea like I said to save every few minutes so the, the shortcut to save is you hold the control button down you tap S you can tell on the from your screen it it will be saving it right now see it's 99% 100 uh, it doesn't take long it just takes a few seconds it's always the best practice so if something were to go wrong right now um, I know that I only lost a few minutes of work okay Okay, so lastly, to create this awesome effect, um, what we want to be able to do is we want to make sure that this layer right here is the only one selected, and we want to click on normal. And you can just play around with uh, any of these settings. So we can normal, dissolve, uh, darken, multiply, color burn, or any of these color. Um, so we're just going to go over each one of them. I know which one that I like, but I just would like to show you guys how amazing it looks and and it, it does it in a real time. Okay, I think hard light looks really amazing because you can really tell the 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 parents, this makeup parents that we have here, you can really tell who they are and you know that uh, if you know them personally and also the main subject, you can tell the main subject who they are also if you know them personally. Um, hard light looks really amazing. So again, make sure that this section gets selected to be able to, to make that change. And now we want to save this as our final work, okay? Because we really like it. So we're going to go to File. We're just going to go Save Again. And we're going to go to File. We're going to go to Save As. The biggest difference between Save and Save As is that Save, you're saving your current work right now. Uh, save As, it's uh, when you click on Save As, it does not affect the original save. It creates a brand new save. So you have two original ones um, and you can even change the location of it. So we're going to click on save this computer. And as you can see right there, because I already named it double exposure four. Um, this one, we can change it to double exposure five. Okay. Four is four, five is five. It's totally separate. And and then I want to change this to the, the first save of anything. You want it to be a Photoshop format. So if we would like to make changes to this particular photograph, we can in the future. So we're going to keep it like that. Okay. And now let's just say I would like to import this. I would like to print it out. I'll go to my local Walmart or any place that prints photographs to be able to do that. I would need to save as a different format. We're going to go to save as. I click on computer and we are going to click on JPEG. Just like that. We'll click save. And then we're going to uh, click on, you know, just how large we want the files to be. And if it's under, you know, depending on what it is that we want, um, uh, 1.5 megabytes is really low. So it's the highest of this point, unfortunately. So we're going to click OK. And it's a high quality. 1.5 megabytes is quite a big file. But if you're going to save it to a USB, it's, it's nowadays we have, you know, USBs that can hold hundreds of thousands. So 1.5 megabyte is not big, but it's high quality. Perfect. Just like that. So now, we want to be able to come back down to this arrow right here and we just want to continue on to hover over any of them that we, we think looks really amazing. I think pint light looks awesome too. I think this looks even better than the first one. We're going to click on it. I want to save this as a separate file. And again, we're going to file, save as. It does not affect the original one again. So as you can see right there, it says double exposure five and we're going to name this six. 
and this one is going to be a photo photoshop format also so i would like to change this in the future i can we're going to click save okay and because i want to print this out too we're going to go to file we're going to save as again here we're going to change this format to a jpeg so we can actually print it out just like that and save and there you have it everybody um if you find values in my work uh you know please subscribe smash that like button so it can be uh, showed more to more people the more likes the more the youtube algorithm will show to more people uh, i appreciate you spending your time with me um and yeah well i hope you guys have an amazing day